Welcome. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to do a one sample Z test using JASP. So, to do a one sample Z test in JASP, you need to do it from the raw data. So, if the question or problem you're attempting to tackle doesn't give you the raw data, uh, you're not going to want to use this method. However, if you have the raw data, you can use JASP to compute the Z tests, single sample Z tests for comparison of means. So here's a hypothetical problem. So let's say there's a validated scale that has been demonstrated uh, to measure state identity strength. So how strongly you identify with, let's say, the state that you live in. Uh, and the mean for that scale is three, and the standard deviation is one. So those are population parameters. Uh, which would allow us to conduct a z-test to compare a, another population that we've sampled from to see if it is in fact the same as this general population or if it is uh, different enough to uh, say it's its own population or it has a different mean rather. Uh, so let's say we sampled seven people, probably not good idea to only sample seven people, but this is just for uh, pedagogical purposes. So uh, let's say we sample seven people at random from a Whataburger in Texas, and we want to know how strongly they identify with their state. Now, it could be that Texans at Whataburger identify very strongly with their state, but we might want to collect some data for whatever reason to see if that's the case. So we have them complete this state identity strength scale, and we have their data in this table right here. So now we want to compare the mean from our sample of seven people at the Whataburger in Texas to the general population. Now the null hypothesis there would usually be that there's no difference between the general population and the Whataburger population. So that's uh, sort of like the, the straw man that we've set up to see if we can reject that null hypothesis and say that there is a difference. Here we're going to do a non-directional uh, test, meaning that the alternative hypothesis will say that there is a difference, uh, and we're not going to state if we think it is higher or lower. Now, if it was a directional test, we probably would uh, state that it is that the mean from from Texans at Whataburger uh, is higher than the general population in terms of state identity. Uh, but uh, for this problem, for now anyway, we'll do it as a non-directional uh, test, and we'll use alpha 0 0.05 uh, two-tailed, which is kind of the default, for better or for worse. That's usually uh, how statistical tests are done. All right, so let's go ahead and open the program. And I've already set up an Excel file with this table so that I can open it in JASP. So the data are in the table there with the variable name at the top. I saved it as a comma separated values file. And now I will open the file, which I believe I have in my downloads. And we load the data set, make sure it came out okay, it looks good to me. We've got it as a scale score, which it is. And we'll go to do the z-test. It's a little bit hidden, it's under t-test. So we'll go to t-test, this is a one sample z-test that we're going to do. So we'll go to one sample t-test. And then, by default, it's going to want to do the one sample t-test, which is the student's t-test. So we'll just deselect that, and we'll select the z-test. And it wants us to put in the test value. So that's the population mean that we're comparing it to, which was what? Which was 3. So we're going to compare this sample mean in our data to the population mean of 3. 
and the standard deviation in this example was 1, so we could leave that alone, but just make sure we have it entered as 1, so that's the population standard deviation and the population mean. Uh, we can go ahead and put the variable in the variables box, and it will give us the z-test, which gives us a z-observed of 3.7, and a relatively low p-value. So when you see this e negative 4, that means move the decimal place to the left 4. So that would be 0 0.0002. So that's a fairly low p-value. Certainly is lower than our alpha of 0 0.05. So we would reject the null hypothesis here, and we would state that there is a difference between the Texans at Whataburger and the general population and how strongly they identify with their state. Uh, we probably want to look at some additional information here. Uh, probably want to look at the descriptive statistics. So we see we have a sample size of 7, a mean in our sample of 4.4, so that's higher than what we were comparing it to, which was 3. So uh, it's considerably higher, and we see that we can reject the null because the p-value is considerably lower than our alpha. This is the standard deviation from the sample, 0.87, and this is the standard error based on the sample. Uh, it's not the standard error that's used in the calculation because that would be the population mean, uh, I mean, the population standard deviation rather divided by the square root of n. So that is uh, basically how you would do those single sample z-test in, in JASP if you have the raw scores. Now that was a, a two-tailed test or a non-directional test. If we had a hypothesis that the Whataburger uh, Texan population was going to have a stronger identification strength with their state, uh, then we would have picked an alternative hypothesis that was directional. And as we see, the, the p-value got lower. In fact, it got cut in half because it, it's a uh, two-tailed test. So the p-value is, is half of what it was before. We would still reject a null there. If for some odd reason we had predicted that the, the Texans at Whataburger had a lower state identity than the general population, we would select this directional test option here, which uh, would lead us to fail to reject the null because the mean from the, the sample was considerably higher than the mean for the, uh, for the, the po general population. Uh, some other options we could look at here are the location parameter is just basically the mean difference and the confidence interval for that. So we don't want to do that as a, let's do that as a two-tailed, it'll make more sense. So we can get the, the mean difference was 1.4, so that's just simply the difference between the, uh, uh, the sample mean and the population mean. The sample mean was 1.4 units higher than the population mean. And we also have a confidence interval for that difference. So we see it's, you know, not a very precise estimate because we have a very small sample. Uh, but it does exclude zero. So we are able to rule out zero, meaning no difference, basically the null hypothesis. So that's how you would uh, conduct a single sample z-test to compare means using JASP. If you don't have the raw data, I mean, a, a single sample z-test is something that you should do uh, by hand, but if you want to check your work, using a program, uh, and you have the raw data, I would recommend using this. If you want to check your work uh, and you don't have the raw data, there are plenty of calculators available on the internet. And one is on Social Science Statistics uh, website where you could just simply put in the population mean. Uh, this asks for the population variance, so if you're working from the population standard deviation, just square it to get the population variance. You'd put in the sample mean and the sample size, the alpha 
that you're dealing with and whether or not it's a one-tailed or a two-tailed test and you would click on calculate z-score and you could get the um, quickly you could get the z-score uh, that way so let's go ahead and do that uh, for, for this problem just for fun uh, we had a population mean of three the variance is the population standard deviation squared in this instance it's one squared which is still one usually they're not the same but this is a special case uh, the sample mean uh, was what was our sample mean uh, 4.4 so if you didn't have the raw data and you just had the sample mean you could do it like that and our sample size was 7 we use an alpha of 0 0.05 and we get a two-tailed test and you can click calculate z-score and it will give you the formula it will give you the math and it will give you the z-observed 3.70 and it will also give you the p-value which we see is 0 0.0002 and then it'll even tell you how to interpret that p-value relative uh, to your alpha. So, I mean, this future times is, is making things really easy for students of statistics to uh, compute these analyses. So hopefully, uh, we don't forget how to interpret these analyses. Well, anyway, thank you uh, for listening. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did.